I, um, I fell into architecture. <laughs> I was, um, you know, when I was young, um, right off the bat, I guess my father, as you, as you know, my brother also is a designer. We, we grew up in a house that was basically centered around visual arts and around, in my father's case, abstract painting and sculpture. My father thought I would be a sculptor, actually, uh, because I guess from a very early age, he saw me working with um, abstract form and so on, and I've always had a kind of love of abstraction and, and formal play. Um, in, when we were very young, my father decided to move us from England at the time, London, to um, Canada, uh, where we were going to go actually from there to the United States. We're going to the New World, and off we went, and we landed in Montreal, and he took me and my brother straight to Expo 67. Um, and there I was, this little kid uh, in awe, looking around at uh, Buckminster Fuller's Dome, at the uh, monorail. Uh, I remember the Russian pavilion had uh, the Sputnik floating in it. There was the, all this kind of fantastic um, image of the, of the next century or of this century. Um, and so, you know, I, I really believed it. I was completely awestruck. And I was taking pictures of my little brownie, and I thought, wow, it's a new world. And the next day, we were in our town home in Montreal, which was exactly like the town home we were in in London. And I said, Dad, what happened to that new world thing that you showed me yesterday? And I think my quest for architecture started there somewhere, uh, just thinking that maybe I'll rebuild that world somehow. The one thing I think is, is about our brand or our work that I don't know if many architects can say this and say it seriously, but it's really something that we're very interested in. Um, is that the works always carry the anticipation of the future. Now, it's not a great marketing tool because people like the present, people like the hemline, the, the fashion of the day. So when you say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, for example, the Hydra Pier in Holland, our first building, uh, the year after it was built, and I actually said to the audience, that ideally this building should have been just printed out of the polder, um, as a, just kind of formed out of the polder as a building. And someone in the audience took me out and said, what are you talking about? Are you in some kind of drug? Or you, you know, what, what makes you say that kind of stuff? I said, well, I said, it's not too far in the future that we'll be looking at a machine in our, in our studios where we'll print form. I didn't know it was true, and I wasn't sort of like doing it like a kind of, a, I wasn't sort of looking into a crystal ball. But it's a logical extension of where we were going. Well, today, downstairs in this office, I have three of those machines, uh, and we're printing stuff, you know, and it looks like what I dreamed of 10 years ago as a whole building. Now, sure enough, they're little models, but they come out of liquid. They, they have this kind of Terminator, you know, sort of phenomena taking place. Um, we were imagining a world of, um, of virtually, a fluid virtual world. We were imagining data networks and social networks and virtual reality. You know, the first passion we had for digital technology was that it would be, allow us to visualize and show people what it is we were dreaming of because people didn't quite understand. When we did the LA Gateway, it was in physical models, it was in old-fashioned drawings, it was a kind of a, um, you know, it was, it was using all the old tools and techniques. And so when it became apparent to us that we could use um, state of th these, these new tools to produce something fascinating and convey it, that became the original. But then we quickly realized that it wasn't about that at all, that this, these tools could potentially change everything we do, the, the way we think, um, the way we see space, the way we make things. So that shifted dramatically from early thinking it could be representational tool to uh, a full, uh, full head-on collision with uh, virtual modeling, virtual reality, um, augmented reality, even in the early days. So in that period, in the early 90s, uh, we, were, we were moving like crazy towards studying in a, a Columbia University and other places what it would be like to really make these tools turn up the ground of this profession. And so I think I kind of realized that my love of potential for, to be a filmmaker, coupled with my training now as an architect, that by the time I was in my early part of my career, that somehow it, it was coming together in a very beautiful way because these tools were bringing that filmic... Um, passion back into play. And then, you know, that turned out to be the virtual reality Guggenheim, the virtual Guggenheim, the virtual stock exchange, um, and other projects that we were doing in that period. So the virtual Guggenheim um, was one of our first major works on that front. And it was, you know, the, you know, you set up the premises. Well, what happens if a building is fluid and liquid? What happens if a building is time-based or space is time-based? What happens if you can view art um, on a whim, and what happens if art actually views you? Uh, what happens if you are in a kind of a, you know, a sort of um, 
a world of, of choice, but a world of chance at the same time. Just take you know, John Cage's sort of, uh, let's say, ideas into space. When it came time to doing other buildings, so-called real buildings, uh, with real clients in this practice, um, we draw a lot on that, on that idea. And so we know that you know, when we confront a project that we will produce a viable, functional, you know, precise building that will give the client what they're looking for in terms of cost, budget, look, and all the rest. But the real discussions in here are, so where is the spatiality? Where is the, 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 the sort of amazing aura of this thing? What is, it, what is it that makes it architecture in the end? Why is it not just another building? Or why is it not just building? And why do we put that word architecture on it? And, and those kind of questions.